Oi, gente, eu sou a Dani Mel. Hoje eu vou conversar com o Milk Chance, essa dupla alemã que tá bombando no mundo inteiro. Tá lançando o single novo, Synchronize, que a gente já toca aqui na programação da Transamérica. E também... É Colorado, que a gente também toca bastante aqui na programação da Transamérica. A gente vai conversar com ele sobre isso e muito mais com exclusividade aqui na Transamérica, a sua rádio onde você estiver. Hi Clement, hi Philip, how are you? Hi, we're good. I'm good. Thank you, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure having you here with us at Transamerica. Yeah, pleasure's on, on our side. <laughs> okay, you've been here in Brazil like Gente, primeiro eu vou perguntar para eles o seguinte, eles estiveram... I'll ask in Portuguese, ok? First. Eu vou perguntar para eles o seguinte, eles estiveram aqui no Brasil, uh, eu acho que há uns três, quatro anos, tocando no Festival de Música. Eu queria saber o que, que eles se lembram daqui, o que, que eles... Né? Qual, qual é a lembrança que eles têm do Brasil? So, guys, you've been here like um, two, um, like three, four years ago. What do you remember from here? Um, what remind, what Brazil reminds you of? Like... Caipirinha, the audience, barbecue. Um, yeah, we've been there and when was it? 2018, I guess. Um, it was our first time and also uh, to now our like, only time we've been there. And um, it was beautiful. Uh, we were in Sao Paulo. Um, we played the Lollapalooza Festival back then. It was massive like huge i think we never saw like so many people uh on one place it was really really impressive um beautiful people beautiful crowd uh i also remember i think philip and i like the day before we play or after i don't remember i think before the day before we played the festival we went to a party do you remember i do Do you remember? You do? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember. And it was called, it was called, in English, it was called uh, Black Mamba. <laughs> that was the party. And uh, it was, that was, it was nice. That was crazy. Uh, so we had a, we had a big night out. We had a lot of fun. Uh, big adventure. <laughs> <laughs> big adventure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ok. You have plans to come to Brazil again? Eu perguntei se eles têm planos, tá, gente, de vir para o Brasil de novo. Uh, not explicit, but definitely we do want to come. Um, yeah. Um, we'll just release a new album this year. And then we're going to start touring in Europe. But then 2023, we definitely want to plan to come, yes. Ah, amazing. So... Eu vou perguntar para eles, gente. Eles acabaram de lançar uma música incrível que a gente já rola aqui na programação da Transamérica, que se chama Synchronized. Eu vou perguntar como foi o processo de criar a música, de escrever a música. E também, o começo da música tem uma inspiração em The Mamas and the Papas. Eles já falaram isso. Eu queria saber por que The Mamas and the Papas e quais são as influências, né? Por que The Mamas and the Papas e quais são as maiores influências que eles tiveram e que eles têm para escrever o som deles. So, guys, you've just released uh, Synchronized. I would like to know how was the process of writing and recording the song. And the beginning of the song was inspired by the Mamas and the Papas, this amazing band of California, that it was a huge success at the 60s. Looks like California dreaming the beginning, right? So how did it happen and why the Mamas and the Papas? Um. Yeah, I think it was, um, it wasn't necessarily the Mamas and the Papas. I think we just found ourselves in like a 60s, 70s vibe. And of course, the Mamas and the Papas are a great, great band out of that time. But um, it was just, yeah, that, that, um, ver, uh, that, let's call it chorus, was there. We were in a session with two boys uh, from Vienna and Sweden. They call themselves Deco and we had a session and... That part what was there and um, felt very vibey and um, just felt good to hear Clemens' voice and that kind of vibe. 
and then we kind of wanted to like have uh or like we envisioned that it could be cool to go into like a job after that since that is kind of like flying and very like you know like kind of free um to like something more dry be driven and like um more like milky chance known and um once we did that we felt it worked so well and, um so the whole process was really when that happened like we all danced in the studio and felt this was yeah such a magic moment and really uh made the song so strong and uh, from there we just uh, had quite some hustle to finish it honestly because uh, mm. the process took quite some time uh that's probably the 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 hard part if you like write a strong chorus that um sometimes it's hard to like find the perfect verse to it it took yeah. us a while but um i think we're really happy how it turned out and um we're really happy to to share it and that it's yeah that people really um like it and uh, we got a lot of really lovely response yeah it's amazing and i i was i was thinking i read I would like to know, just wait. Eu vou perguntar para eles, gente, eu li que as maiores influências deles, quando eles se conheceram, porque eles se conheceram no colégio, foram Red Hot Chili Peppers e Bob Marley. Eu não sei se ainda é assim. Eles tinham 19 anos quando eles se conheceram lá atrás. Vamos ver se ainda é assim. So, uh, guys... Uh, which are your biggest influences? Because uh, I read, I don't know if it, if that's true, when you met, Philip used to listen mostly to Red Hot Chili Peppers and Clements uh, used to listen mostly to Bob Marley. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, we can, you can say that, you know, back in the days, uh, in our teenage years, There's definitely been the time where we, you know, we're really into both of these artists, but not only. Um, What else? Of course. What I else? Mean, I, I also I also listen to a lot of uh, Chili Peppers. Uh, Philip was also is also a big John Frusciante fan. I listened a lot to his stuff. Um, uh, I think you cannot say that it was. Philip listening to this and me listening to that. We were always very, uh, very open uh, when it comes to listening to different genres. Um, and that was also something we shared from the beginning on, like our interest in music, our taste in music. When First, when we met in high school, um, you know, we just uh, realized that we, you know, that we have... Uh, the same interests in music and uh, that we like all of these many artists, not only from, you know, we like stuff from the 60s and 70s and, you know, because you were talking about it in the 80s, but also, you know, like new artists uh, love to discover new stuff and it really goes through the genres. So, um, but we had a big face of, of the Peppers and of Bob Marley. Yeah, 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 uh. we had a big face, of course, but it was not like, you know, only that. But uh, yeah, think, for sure. If you painted yourself, Clemens had like a Bob Marley spray paint in his. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did like a like a stencil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I was actually collecting pictures of John Frusciante. And I had <laughs> no way, really. Oh, so there's there's some kind of like there was a very like yeah. Uh, ah, it's a. It's amazing. Like, Frusciante yeah, is we back on the Chili Peppers. They just released a new album. It's amazing. That is very true. They right. did. Right, right. Amazing. And do you know, do you know do you know anything about Brazilian music? Brazilian music. Brazilian actually, music. Um, I mean, Clemens couldn't go sadly, but he's also a big fan. Um, we are all big fans of Rodrigo Amarante. Rodrigo Amarante. Eh, yeah. Los Hermanos. Uh, What? Rodrigo Amarante, he was from Los Hermanos, right? His band? Yes, Los Hermanos. Los band. Hermanos. Yes. Uh, It was I the name of his, his band. band. Brazil, but um, we are big fans of his music. Um, other than that, from Brazilian music, it's a good question. I know, uh, I don't know, I don't know if she's uh, Brazilian, but, or isn't, um, 
is that one song from the Vanessa de Mata? Vanessa da Mata, yeah, she's from Brazil. Vanessa da Mata, yeah, and there's that one song, what's it called? You ain't on the night, you ain't on the night. Boa sorte. Boa sorte. With Ben, ben Boa Harper. Boa sorte. With Ben yes. Harper, right? I love that song. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. And she's amazing as well. Yeah. Gente, eles conhecem bem nesse... So, we, we know some, but not that much. Ah, but it's amazing. Vanessa da Mata is like... It's not like João Gilberto... Tom Jobim, you know, everybody always says the same. They are amazing as well. But Vanessa da Mata is very, she's, she's very cool. Ok, so... É, eu vou perguntar para eles o seguinte, gente. Colorado foi, um, foi um, um sucesso gigante, né? E eles lançaram, se eu não me engano, é, o final do ano passado, né? E aí, eles, logo depois do lockdown. Então, eu queria saber se eles sentem como se isso fosse um, um novo começo e se eles sentem a pressão de lançar sempre um hit que seja tão importante e tão forte quanto foi Stolen Dance, que foi o primeiro grande sucesso da banda de 2013, que foi quando eles se conheceram, né? So, uh, guys, Colorado was a tremendous hit, right? And for you, it was like a new beginning, like after one or two years of uh, lockdown. And do you feel like we have to do something as big as a uh, stolen dance? Does it put like pressure on you always to create something uh, big again? Hmm. <laughs> I think we always want to like, create something great. Like we always want to make good music, but the music that we ourselves find to be fulfilling and good, how big it becomes in the end, I think is not really in our hands. Yes. Um, so, but of course it is um, always... You know, when you share something where you feel it's very intimate, but at the same time, you're also very convinced that you are happy with it and you think it's great and good. Of course, there's like a part of you that is hoping for that to be recalled or mirrored. Um, so I would say we are hopeful, but we don't know. You never know, uh, right? You never know. Yeah, but when we're when we're in the studio, and because you never know, when we're in the studio, and when we're, you know, when we're in the creative process, we don't we don't let it in that much, you know. Um, you just want to do uh, good music. We, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like you know, the the focus is on expression and creating something, and not on you know, I don't know like serving somebody else's expectations. Uh, of, of course, there's expectations, as Philip said, and we also have, you know, yeah, wishes or like, you know, hopes uh, that it'll be well received. But um, yeah, it's always a guessing game. Yeah, but if you, if you think too much... Right, if you want if you do music for others, it's not going to be that that beautiful thing that like real music, right? You have to feel no, yeah. do it for I yourself. Always, you will always hear if music is sincere or not. And I think that's really key to good music on both sides and in the end also sustainably, you know, like if you make sincere music I think it will last the longest and people will also hear it. And I think that, that's what it is about, really. Yeah, I, I think so. Because, gente, eles tiveram mais de 5 bilhões de streamings das músicas dele, pe, deles pelo mundo inteiro. Será que eles imaginaram que aqueles dois moleques que se conheceram né, na, com 19 anos, terminando o colégio, e eles lançaram sozinhos o primeiro disco deles, o Sad Necessary, eles fizeram sozinhos. Será que eles imaginaram que a música ia levar eles aonde levou, viajando pelo mundo? Será que eles tinham um, um plano B? 
So, guys, uh, more than 5 billion streaming of your songs all over the world. Have you ever imagined that the two guys that produced by themselves said necessary with like 19 years old, finishing school, were going to travel around the world because of their music? I mean, you, you had like a, a B, a plan B, like to be like lawyers or, <laughs> or <laughs> teacher or <laughs> anything else? <laughs> Yeah, lawyers was the plan. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> uh, doctor, maybe? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we needed lawyer, but it is incredible. And it, it almost seems like destiny was very gentle to us because <laughs> we, we really didn't have any plan B. No. So I think we would have struggled a bit if if that didn't come to us i mean i i think it would we would have still tried to do music really because i think it's so natural and feels good and we also like did music before and we also bust on the streets and we played on weddings and gigs and that felt good as well and um yeah so i think The success of that album was really um, a big door opener and um, the path that we went on. But I think, yeah, again, I think music would have been the plan anyway. Plan so. A, just a plan and not B. You don't have B plan. <laughs> no. no. No plan B. No. No plan B. I mean, you know, like we were we were 19. Yes. <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have any plans back then. Well, I, I, when I when so. I went to university, I was like uh, 17 when I was studying like advertising oh, really? and marketing. Okay, I don't work with that at all, but you know, it, it's here. I was very young, and we, when we were so yeah. young, you don't know what really to choose, but you have to. You have no, pressure on you, right? I mean, sure. I mean, Our society is very built on that, eh? Yes. You go to kindergarten, you go to school, and then you start studying. But um, really, I think that's also a big lucky thing we all had that our parents and generally our environment was very supportive and never really pressured it too hard to, um, yeah, that we had to like study immediately or make mm. decisions or had to know what to do. Like, Yeah. We had a lot of freedom and a lot of space, and I think that gave us, yeah, the the convenience to convenience and the self confidence to to do what we did and to make mm. an album. Yeah, mm. that's amazing because my parents they say, okay, if you want to try music, you can try, but you have to study and you have to do university as well together. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah no. that's, that's the thing. Yeah. So, guys, quando eles fizeram o Sad Necessary, gente, acho que a internet ajudou eles bastante. E eu vou perguntar para eles o quanto a internet ajudou eles nesse processo. Se, olhando para trás, quando eles colocaram o disco no YouTube, se eles podiam imaginar que, fosse, que o Milk Chance fosse ficar tão grande. Guys, how much you think that the internet helped you in this process? You did uh, by yourself the album, and then you put the songs at the YouTube, and you could never imagine how how big it was going to be. Could you? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the beginning, it made it. You know, that platform. Uh, it was our platform. It, it, it was uh, really. Uh, it made it possible for us to just share the music worldwide uh so it was accessible for everyone and um it also made it possible that we that we could have like you know so so much response from all over the world and i mean of course like after after a few months you know when we started working uh with labels and all that you know there was like you know Then there was people also involved working with the album, uh, campaigning and all that. But um, uh, yeah, YouTube was uh, the thing. Um, it was really uh, our 
yeah, our platform. And um, um, yeah, it just made it uh, possible for us to share the music, you know, on that level, which is, uh, yeah, amazing. Yes, and happened that thing. I want to know something that I was, I was trying to find out, but eu vou perguntar, gente, por que, que o nome é Milky Chance? Que em português quer dizer o quê? Uma chance de leite, uma chance leitosa. Eu não consegui entender muito bem, eu vou perguntar para eles por quê, tá? So, guys, why the name is Milky Chance? What does that mean? I mean, any connection to like milkshake? What does that mean? Milky, Ch Milky Chance. How, how, how does that name appear? I mean. Um, there's no meaning behind that name. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, you know, every time like uh, people ask us this question, we are like, oh, maybe we should tell like a nice story, we should invent like a, <laughs> like a nice story and just and just tell the story because there's really no story behind it. And, well, um, years later, and there's still no story. No story. You were like, yeah. oh, we need a name. We, why? Why? The, why? Milk. It's like that is right. that is the headline. Milky chance. Still no story. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, you were like, okay, we need the name. So okay, uh, microphone. She like it just appeared from out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, I, I came up with that name even before we started, like the before we made the album and um i don't know it's just like uh yeah a, a weird combination of two words but it's kind of sticky we felt that you know mm -hmm. uh it's it's a little it's weird but it's sticky so yeah sounds you know. good yeah yes why And not <laughs> why not I like. And I've heard as well, eu vou perguntar para eles também, que se o nome Colo, Colorado, que também eles, eu acho que o Clemens gostava do som da palavra, que ele sempre quis escrever uma música com esse nome. Eu vou perguntar se é verdade, eu também não sei. So, uh, Clemens, I don't know if it's you. Uh, it is, is it true that you, you always loved the, the word Colorado? And you always said the sound of it. And you always wanted to, to write a song with that word? Is that true? Um, that, there was like an old, uh, I remember there was like an old voice memo that also had the word Colorado, uh, somewhere in there. Um, and when we had the, when we had the session in the studio, I think I just remembered that word, um, um, kind of unconsciously, spontaneously, um, because it was, you know, it was that moment in, in the studio, We were actually working on another song, but we kind of got stuck, so we took a break. And Philip was hanging on the couch and just, you know, played some guitar. And he had that riff. And we all really liked that riff. It was like it had a certain drive, and it was really cool. And then I just started like, it's like, like most of the time when we write, um songs it is like you know you have either some chords and then you see you know you just start singing to it and you just mumble and there's no like no actual words it's just like oh they did and no, no, it's a, like some you know like like made up english yes and that time it was like oh, man, colorado you know just came up again that word i think it sounds really cool so we had that and then we I don't know, like within five minutes, we just uh, found some cool phrases with that word included. So, um, yeah, but it's, I think it's like a lot of times we are also, well, like, we are very driven by the sound of it, you know, the yes. phonetic of words, I think is also very important. Yeah, I agree. As the meaning, of course, it has like the song. <laughs> transport something there's a meaning behind it there's a story that you want to tell uh there's an emotion but also i think that's also something because we also listen to music which is in a foreign language i mean english is a foreign language for us but we also listen to like you know i don't know spanish or uh portuguese uh, portuguese and um i think there's also like 
you can understand or like yeah you can get sometimes what the music is about and what the song is about just by hearing it and just by you know hearing how it sounds so um yeah that's something that we also that we always uh yeah uh think of a lot that it has to sound nice you know and sometimes you write something down and it doesn't make that much sense but then in the end you you know you work on it and but the sound is really like you know sounds so good it touches you can i give so, you a can i give you a Colorado suggestion Colorado was yeah. that one word <laughs> can i give you a suggestion that i i i was i will tell you a word that i love massachusetts <laughs> It's oh. <laughs> You know it's the same. That's a hot one. That's I a love one. this word Massachusetts. I love it's it's the it's an English word that I both love, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but it's a tough one. <laughs> Have you ever been to Colorado? Yes, yes we've been. Yeah. Before the song or after the song? Before, with, and after. And after. <laughs> Okay, and uh, Clement, a uh, question. Your voice reminds me Bono's voice from U2, the, the tone. Has somebody ever mentioned that to you? Uh, no. No? <laughs> I don't I, know. I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm the only one, but I'm, I, the tone reminds me, you know, in the beginning okay. of U2. I mean, funny-wise, I never listened to U2. <laughs> never? You don't like U2? <laughs> I don't, I mean... I don't I, I well I probably know some of their songs but I never listened like to like deeply to it you know um but maybe I'm going to listen to it now after <laughs> uh, after Sorry. this to to see if you're right or not <laughs> Yeah in the beginning of you to remind me of the tone and <laughs> Ok. Eu vou perguntar, gente, o seguinte, como é, eles, eles sempre escreveram as músicas em inglês, né? Como é que eles explicam o sucesso internacional do Milk Chance? Porque eles são alemães, então... É, e eles sempre escreveram em inglês, nunca em alemão. Será que foi de propósito? Será que eles tinham isso em mente, da banda estourar no mundo inteiro? Guys, how do you explain the international success of Milk Chance? When you decided to write songs in English, maybe you were planning that? Uh, I think um, there's no real explanation. I think um, we never tried to explain this. Um, I think we're just very grateful, and it's the coolest thing. I, I think it's almost as much as we love listening to all kinds of music from all over the world, and that we very, yeah, don't feel any borders in music. It's almost so great and yeah like funny that we are able to play shows all over the world and see all these places and um it's it's really i think the coolest thing um, and we are very very happy for it um and i guess yeah maybe Eng english of course might might be um might be a good thing but again there's spanish singing artists french singing artists um that have quite success so i think it's it's not the it's not the main thing what language you sing in i think again it's important that you that your music transports emotion it's all about emotion you know then that you hear sincerity and um i think then it really can be worldwide successful and um yeah yes Amazing. Just, uh, I think, Hamstein, they, they, they sing in, in German, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, missed, I missed the German example. <laughs> <laughs> And, guys, uh, gente, eles vão completar 10 anos de Milky Chance. Como é que ele, será que ele se sente com isso? Next year, or this year, you're completing 10 years of Milky Chance. One decade. How do you feel about that? Old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's something. laughs> um, we feel great. Yeah, great. We grateful. Each other. And um, I mean, it's amazing. We we did almost four albums. Uh, the fourth is about to come. And um, yeah, I mean, 
still we play shows still people listen to our music we can tour we can record music um we can live from doing music um that's really amazing if you do it the longer you do i feel the more grateful you become and the more you realize the the privilege and the happiness to really get out of it you know like we really like we do and we are able to do that and that's that's amazing it's yeah and we have to finish the interview now lastly um, eu vou perguntar a gente se eles têm algum recado para os fãs do Brasil e para os ouvintes da Transamérica, né? Uh, is there anything, guys, that you'd like to say or to share with, with your friends of Brazil? And I'll, I'll, can you send a message to our listeners of Transamérica FM? Yeah. Portuguese is Clemens' favorite language, and he can say one sentence. In Portuguese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Let's I go. Once send, uh, what's it called? Queijo uh, uh, beige. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> what does that mean? Queijo beige. Queijo e um beijo. That's it? Queijo um beijo. Yeah, my, I mean, my, my pronunciation is not the best. No, but I, 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 I want to understand. Queijo is like cheese and beijo is a kiss. Is that right? Yeah, no. <laughs> Wasn't it like I like I I want I want to kiss I want to kiss Eu quero um beijo Eu quero eu quero um beijo Eu quero um beijo Yeah um beijo. You know what I mean Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that was not good But um um to our fans uh, as Philip said we just uh we about to finish our album and we want to release uh, we're going to release it this year So um Very looking forward to share this one with everybody, and um, so yeah, the, uh, everybody okay. should, should uh, watch out. Uh, there will be new music uh, very soon, and um, yeah, we want to go on tour with the new music end of this year, but also especially the next year, and we definitely want to uh, come back to Latin America and also Brazil. So um and yeah uh thanks for following us and listening to our music and um there will be there will be new stuff coming soon. Uh thank you your music guys is amazing. We hope to see you here when you come to Brazil. Come to visit us here at the Radio. It's going to be a pleasure to have you here and keep on doing music because it's amazing. Milky Chance. Thank you. Rocks. Thank you Thanks. very much. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. It was a, it was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Take so care. much. Thank you. Bye. 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 É isso, gente. Espero que vocês tenham gostado. Eu adorei. Beijo e continue ouvindo Transamérica, a sua rádio, onde você estiver. Tchau. I'd rather be